So this is a massive topic. And I listened to the speakers earlier, and it is about the patient. I mean, I can stand up here, somebody who's representing IBM, but I'm a clinical person by background. I worked in the NHS for over a decade in cardiology and radiology. Um, I've been in healthcare my whole life. So I'm actually passionate about actually making a difference to the patient because it is about the patient. So I think sometimes we, lots of people come up here and talk about tech. Um, there was a great uh, analogy earlier um, by a gentleman that turned around and said, it's, just, it's not about the data, it's about the patient. And it truly is. So I think we have to, when we talk about AI, which is a huge, broad topic, everyone has a different perspective on it. Everyone thinks they know what artificial intelligence is, augmented intelligence, um, IA earlier was a, was a comment as well, which I think is, is a great way to position it. Fundamentally, this track is about democratization of health, which is access to information. And what AI allows you to do is get access to more information. It allows you to make a more informed decision. Um, there is no doubt, friends of mine are clinicians, obviously Shafi's here as well, he's gone now, he's, he's bored of this presentation already, but he, but he knows that he needs information to make decisions. So when we talk about AI, we, we have to look at the data. We have to look at what is the information that's available to you, and we have to understand what do you want to do with it. So what I'm going to try and do, as I count down here for 13 minutes, 23, 22 seconds, is try and give you some perspective on what is the industry looking at from an AI perspective. Why? Why is it important? And what are the benefits of it? So I think if we, if we focus on the, on the reasons we do it, as opposed to what it is, we'll get more benefit out of this. So let's see if this works. So I want to introduce you to a, a lady called Michelle. She is a Medtronic employee who is type Dear 1 diabetes. diabetes. Listen to this. Since I was nine, you've been a part of me. You have impacted what I eat. You make me track my numbers. You make me, my family, my kids worry. The uncertainty of whether I am making the right decisions about you and my health never leaves. You're unpredictable and leave me guessing. But now, my phone, which I use to know the weather before it hits, get directions, and keep in touch with friends and family, has a new app designed to help people with diabetes like me. With the Sugar IQ Assistant, now I not only have numbers and data on you, but insights into what makes you tick. The Sugar IQ Assistant understands me, my life as a wife and mom with young kids, my passion for exercise, and my commitment to a job I love. And Sugar IQ with Watson Technology actually predicts when I could have lows, so I can get ahead of it. With the Sugar IQ Assistant, I am now clearly smarter about you, diabetes. Yours truly, Michelle. So, so why is that important? There's, oh, oh, oh we've gone backwards. Hold on a second. OK, thank you. This is not about AI, okay? This is about somebody, I mean, this is Wednesday of a three-day conference where alcohol is everywhere, okay? So glucose levels are low. This person lives with it every minute of every day. She presented to us in January this year, and she had her pump, and she, she was ready to come on the stage and talk, and the alarm goes off. This is her life, okay? So her to have access to more information about her and her life impacts everything. It impacts her children, it impacts her life, it impacts her work impacts our decisions. So this is not just about artificial intelligence, it's about access to information. And I think today we, we have loads of information. There, there is a statistic out there that less than 1% of all data is actually used. Less than 1%. So if you think about less than 1% we actually use, it, there's so much information out there, what, good and bad, okay? People do good and bad with it. They try and make decisions based on the information in front of them. But I think if we harness that information, and again, use AI as a, you can use AI as a concept or you can use it as a technology. I think today, if I want to get to this region and, and Europe as a whole, I think we're in very early stages. I think it's, it is about data consolidation. It is about looking at information and trying to make some meaningful outcomes from that information. So let's just quickly move on because the countdown just keeps going. So what is it? <laughs> it's amazing. So that's the question I get all the time. What is artificial intelligence? And I think there is an element of we have to get back to reality of what do we do today? 
so we can actually see what artificial intelligence is. So that's what it is, apparently. It's everything. It's every single buzzword in the industry today is artificial intelligence. So, but where are we is what I want to try and paint to you and, and give you some use cases of, of how we've applied it in health. Because if we don't take where we are now, we're in the 21st century, okay, so we need to, we need to, we need to check ourselves. I, I've got some great friends who remind me of the fact that I didn't have a phone when I grew up. I didn't. And I grew up in the southwest of Ireland where I had to go to the post office to put something into a machine and, and take a phone call, right? But that happened. That's still happening in the world, right? And that's like only five years ago, clearly. But we, we've moved on really quickly. And I think the problem is there's an analogy that getting over your skis. I think we've got over our skis a little bit with AI. I think we have to come back to reality and look at use cases and look at outcomes and look at the data and be, be, be honest about it. What are we trying to do here? So what we're trying to do is we're trying to reduce the time to treat. We're trying to benefit patients. And we get back to that reality and then go back into technology, we'll see way more benefit. I think the challenge today is the buzzwords. It's the blockchains, the robotics, and the NLP. You know, I mean, we've got acronym. Healthcare is full of TLAs, three-letter acronyms, right? It's full of them. And if you have a FLA, a four-letter acronym, wow. I mean, you've really stepped it. So we have to focus on not the words, but what we're trying to do. Okay, so, so when we look at deep learning, AI, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to today, just for this session, in, in the short time I have, is kind of bring it back down to where we are right now. Okay, in, this, in Europe. Not in the world, because the world is, is a vast place, and people have got some great innovation going on in, in Asia, in the US, but also in Europe. And, and bring it down to why do we do it here? So what is the point of doing AI in this region? So, three areas. General science fiction, robots, okay? It's, uh, it's AI, okay? So the, the red beating heart of the robots all going out of the machine. That's general. So let's not talk about general, okay? Because general is truly automation, the brain. It is the way the brain thinks. It's, it's reasoning, okay? It's, it's the ability to make decisions autonomously. That's general AI. So we'll park that for a minute, because it is the world of science fiction. Will we get there? I hope not while I'm alive. I really do, okay? But there is the rise of the machines. There is human versus you know, versus everything, versus robot, okay? So we have to focus on what we're doing right now. What we're doing right now is narrow. So one task, one domain. And when I say one task, one domain, somebody goes, what do you mean by one domain, one task? What you, what you mean is it's just got one thing to do. So the autonomous driving car, one task, one domain, okay? So looking at the weather, the weather is one domain, one task is looking at the weather. We are moving to broad AI, which is multitasks in one domain, which is when the algorithms learn from each other. Okay? But we're not there yet. We're still in the narrow space. So, so again, back to reality. But how do you get there? So, so I have, I've got the privilege, but at the same time, the problem of speaking to many people about, OK, I have an organization, I've got lots of information. This has not gone well, clearly. It's okay. Was that, the, was, that the, was that the slide? I think it might have been. So I haven't got any sexy Uber pants on, so sorry, but I'll, I'll keep going. Okay. But the thing is, you have to get back to what are you trying to achieve. And I think, you know, if you take medicine, if you take data and technology, we have a massive opportunity now. We didn't have this opportunity when I had my plug my phone in, try and speak to my mother over, over a cable. But we've got it right now. So I think we have to focus on things we can do. So... So I think an element of AI is it's, wh where do I go? Where do I start? Okay. What is the biggest problem I've got in my organization? I think you have to focus down on those, those big problems and, and focus, say, look, that's the only thing I want to solve right now. It's not about resources. It's not about tech. It's about patients and reducing the time to treat and getting more information faster, allowing them to be more personal. So we talk about personalized medicine, but we don't really do it. You know, we, we say personalized medicine is very important because it's a buzzword. But actually, what is personalized medicine? It's mapping someone's genome profile, them as a person, and the fact they've got breast cancer as a person, and they're an age from a country in a place, not a cohort. That's personalized medicine. That's somebody feeling like their health is them and getting treated because they are who they are. So I guarantee you, if there's anyone in this room that's got all of these, 
please stand up because you've, you've solved it and, and you, need to come, you need to come and work for all of us by the looks of it. Because do you know what data you have at your disposal? Yeah, you do. You've got systems, you've got integration, you've got loads of big companies coming in going, oh, we can integrate everything. No, they can't. Because integration is not really what the problem is. It's about interoperability between this information. So integration sometimes is a way to, to solve a problem by putting something in one place. It doesn't really give you insights. So insights is really where the world of AI starts to really be impactful. So if you look at, do you know where the data is and how to access it? Yeah, you do. You've got a screen, maybe five of them, and five systems you open up, and you can find it. Trust me, I'm the person that closes down the same error I get on my laptop every morning and never fix it. We all do that, okay? Our phone comes up, it's broken, but we're still punching away into the broken glass because we need it, right? So you know how to get access to information. Can you access it? Yes. Do you know what insights you want to drive from it? No, you do not. I, I guarantee you there is so much that we want to step back and go, look, look at all the information on our phone. Look at all the information on me. Look at all of my hundreds and hundreds of letters that I kind of don't want to open because I know which one it's from. You just don't look at it. You don't look at the data. And, and we, when we talk about AI, it is about the data. This is an industry, okay? It's an algorithm. It's able to find information, and it's able to learn from information. The, the, the beauty of AI is it's able to learn, okay? Is it, m is it human versus machine? No, because if it's human versus machine, we wouldn't have an industry, trust me. Is, is it polarized? Yes, there's naysayers, and there's people that want to do this. And honestly, I think right now, if we combine medicine, which, by the way, talking about gene therapy, genomics, this is a new wave of medicine now. And we have the data and we have the technology. We have to do this. I mean, this is our, you know, we're, we're, here, to, we're here to make a difference. We're here as a population right now, at this point in time, in 2019, to make a difference. So we should embrace this. And why? Because it's a massive problem. It's a massive problem because we have too much information to consume. We cannot make a decision on all the information we have. We make a decision and we try and make it right. We don't sometimes make the right decision. And, and, you know, there's, there's loads of stats on here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I come from an imaging background, so I worked in radiology for about six months, no, about 15 years, in A&E, in radiology department. And I spent most of my time looking at systems, not patients. And, and radiology sometimes is like the, the afterthought, but every single patient in the hospital goes through radiology. It's diagnostics. It's early stage, see someone, treat someone, do something. It's really early stage. Now, clearly, if we get the right decision and we, we make the right thing to do, we get the patient to the right place, we move them to the next step, and that's when it's therapeutic, right? So radiologists, and many friends of mine through the, through the years are radiologists, they spend so much time on non-interpretive tasks. So much time because they haven't got access to all the information. They also haven't got access to all the research. So we talk about democratization. The true value of natural language, so looking for information. I mean, we talk about Watson and, and, and all these great things, but it truly is about natural language. It's looking for information in context, and context is the key. So they can go find information about this disease, which they've never seen before. They found it on an image. A system told them on the image this was probably the disease that they were looking at. Why is that not good? So, so I'm trying to, in this very short space of time, which is... This is really, really distracting, by the way, this clock. I'm trying to give you a reality as humans on artificial intelligence because we, we look at this technology as augmented. And everyone says about AI and IA, but augmentation is about providing more information to someone to make a better decision. So if you are a physician, a surgeon, a nurse, a caregiver, and you have more information on that person, you will make a better decision. That's fundamental, because you, you've got a more informed decision. They call it informed consent, you've got informed decisions, but it really is access to information. And most clinicians in the world, and most caregivers in the world, you're as good as your last couple of years of training. You're as good as your last couple of years of caring, because that's the information you have at your fingertips. But imagine if you could have access to all the information about this disease in the world right now in real time. That's truly what AI benefits in. Really?
is that is that like done? Or that means that means I'm gonna. Okay. Okay. It felt a bit Matrix. Okay. So so I'm letting you read that in your own time. If this okay. <clears throat> this is gonna happen. Okay. And I'm not saying that because I represent a very large organisation, but I'm someone who's been in healthcare my whole life. I'm passionate about this because I truly believe if we don't embrace Forget the word artificial intelligence. We don't embrace data and access to information. Then I truly believe that we're missing a really, really big opportunity. So, where is it happening? There's loads of segments today where I'm seeing really good stuff in artificial intelligence. So, oncology, great example. Why? Cancer is really important. Okay, we have to be better at finding it. We have to be better at getting patients to hospital faster. Because that's the key. It's not about the treatment. It's about actually identifying them earlier. Because, I, I, again, great opportunity to speak to certain people. But actually, when someone said to me, you know, you have a system that you use in the hospital. It's very far down the track, though. I mean, this is when they want to be treated. The key is, weirdly, because no one wants to get patients into hospitals, apparently. Okay? But weirdly, you want to get them there quicker. And you want to get them quicker, and they don't even know they need to be there yet. So... There is an issue around personal wanting to know information. There clearly is the body scan issue. Like 10 years ago, people go, mm, do I really want false positives? Do I really want to know? Yes, you do want to know. You do want to know. So hiding behind a situation is not going to solve it. So do you want information about yourself? Do we constantly, I mean, we are in the world of Instagram, right? I mean, I used to call it a photo. People call it selfies now. It's a photo, right? Because it's about them. And people care about themselves more now than they ever did. So if they care about themselves, then they should know about themselves. And I think the, the data's there. You need to embrace it. You need to access it. And you need to make a decision about whether that's important to you as a person. So oh, it's OK, by the way. This is really easy. This is the problem. There is multiple people involved in this pathway of a person. And this is a person who's sick. What about the person who's not sick? Doesn't know they're sick yet. This is a pathway of community, primary care, hospitals, back to the community again. There is many ways and many people involved in this process. These people are not connected. This information is not connected. So imagine fixing one simple little thing in this pathway. Just one thing. It could even be the community nurse actually has access to the information of the person they're meeting. I mean, basics. But they don't. They, they walk up. And generally, what happens to me, and again, my learned colleague, Mark, who spoke this morning, is a GP. But my GP goes to me, he closes the book and goes, so why are you here? I'm like, you don't know why I'm here? I registered and spoke to someone and told them why I'm here. You have my medical record that tells you why I'm here. But there's too much information. They can't consume it. So they just close it and go, why are you here? Then he goes to the next GP and he goes, why are you here? That has to stop. Because the information that you have right now on your phones, in your life, on your, on your laptops, that errors keep coming up. It's important to you, okay? And you act on it today. You, you act on the fact that you're here. You made a decision. You got on a flight or walked, hopefully. But you made a decision to do something. You did it based on you, your time, your agenda, your phone calls. I, I know that, and I'm grateful you're all here. But this is information that you use today. Why don't you use it in your life? Why don't you use it in your health? Because people get sick and they think, oh, OK, health is not that important. Someone else is going to look after me. No, you have to take ownership of it. You have to understand your own information. So there's loads we can help with, OK? Loads. And everyone, not just IBM, everybody can help with this. So where do we start? That's the problem. Where do I start? No one knows where to start. They go, come and do an AI workshop with me. I'm like, what's the point of that? Where, where do we start? What, what is your biggest problem right now? And, and be binary about it. OK, my problem is surgical waiting times. Great. What's your problem with it? Well, my problem is they put 10 patients on there, one hour slots. And I know this woman, 94 years old, has got a fractured neck of a femur. It's going to take two hours. So why can't the system book them based on the patient? Easy, right? You take their information from their head based on a profile of a person, and you map it. That's their problem, and it's their biggest problem because they get run over, um, the nurses have to stay later, then they cost more money, 
that there's more surgical kit, they don't really need it, they get loads of, so there's loads of reasons to do stuff. And it's not just about money, it's actually about being much more efficient in an organization. So just think that, so there's loads here, right? Instant alerting tool to identify patients at risk of acute kidney injury, monitors blood tests. I mean, these are really simple problems. It's not hard to do this stuff. What is hard is to let it do it on its own. So to actually support someone in their clinical practice, whether it be a caregiver, a nurse, a doctor, again, it's not all about the doctors, okay? There's a big organization. It's not that difficult. But what you have to do is get down to a problem as opposed to go, oh, I need AI in my organization because I have a new chief digital information officer, that's his job. You don't, you need to solve a problem. And maybe AI, maybe it's data and analytics that solves your problem. So, this is really techie slide. Um, I have loads of techie friends that like me to put this one up. But, but fundamentally, it's the... Oh. oh. God, there's people everywhere. <laughs> so, it's just about the data, okay? And I know someone said earlier, it's not about the data. It's about the data that benefits the patient. And I totally get his point. It is about the patient. But you can't get to that point unless you actually create a, a canonical form of data, which is a, a weird word, but basically the same information from the information you have. So what you want to do is take all of your information. You want to go, this is my problem. Not, I want to get all my information together. This is my problem right now I want to solve. And you bring it together and you go, I want that piece, that piece, that piece, and let a system analyze it and go, actually, mm, you're missing a couple of bit, bits. So for us to be really accurate, we need a bit more information. So we go out to another system, take a bit more information, and do that over and over again. The value of a system is bias. There is no bias. It just does what it's told to do. The, the challenge, but also the benefit of a human is bias. So again, back in my early days, I had the, I had the, the privilege, and not the privilege, of reporting mammograms. So sitting there through... 30,000 images in a year, normal, normal, which is great, by the way. Normal's good. Normal, normal, normal. To see an abnormal, I'm going, there's not going to be another one. Because the incidence of mammograms and breast cancer is very, very low. It's like very, very low. It's like 99.99% are normal. It's that one that you don't want to miss, right? So you go through normal, normal, normal. And you're, you, you're abnormal, and you think, the next one can't be abnormal. Because my bias is telling me as a human, no way is the next one abnormal. And I'm already thinking it's normal. That's a problem. Because I'm not actually just being binary about the data, what I'm looking at in, in front of me. So, good data. Clean data is a... It's, it's not about clean data. It's about the right data you want to access. Still going. Are you ready? Clearly not. So, I want to talk to you about a couple of use cases... And, and they're very close because they're very important. So Alderhey Children's Hospital is in the northwest of England, um, a team that's just got to the Champions League final, which is very annoying because I've got a London team, but Liverpool, up that way. And they came to us many years ago and said, we have a massive issue with anxiety of children in our hospital about surgery. So, so not a... You know, it, it's the person coming in, so they truly thought about the patient. We need to reduce the anxiety levels of our children post-surgically and pre-surgical. So we're like, okay. So what we did, took their information, created an app. They could create their own avatar as a child. So whatever they wanted, teddy bear or, or whatever. I think that's a bit of a weird one down there, but anyway. So... That's not one, because that, I think that, that, that would be, uh, they'd be looking into why, why that person looks so unhappy. So what they do is create their own avatar. They can interact with it. They can ask it questions. The information is already in there to give them answers. But what it was doing was actually analyzing tone and sentiment of the information that they were talking into. So how anxious were they when they were asked certain questions? Now, the great thing about this is that the, the, the carers, the doctors and the nurses and everyone that treated this patient had this information before they came in. So if they were scared about the big bad person that goes 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5 before they go to sleep, they can deal with that before they come in. They can actually get ahead of it, but also 
they can talk to them about what's going to happen afterwards. Because sometimes, I mean, children are, are our future. Um, I live in a country that has 25% of our population is children. 15 million people are children. That's a country of children. If we fix them, they will look after us. We have to focus on important parts of our lives, which is our children. Okay? So they come in in a much better experience. They know their information. They know what's going on. They can ask questions, and they can take it home. Now, you can go another level and put the iPad inside a teddy bear. You can do all that sort of stuff, right? Because there is those, those teddy bots that you can have as well, right? So you can go another level. But fundamentally, they said, and they measured, and their CIO will speak about it, it reduced the anxiety levels of the children, pre- and post-surgical. They came in happier, more informed, because they need to know information. I, I, you know, I've got two children myself, and, and I know my eight-year-old boy, who, if anyone's got an eight-year-old son, pretty much has got headphones on and has his back to me constantly, like this. Like constantly. And it's Fortnite or it's FIFA or whatever. And what was interesting recently, he goes to me, this 2019 FIFA is really hard. I'm like, ah. He goes, what are these AI teams I've got to play? I'm like, ah. The world has changed. So 2018, he used to beat everyone at world class. He was brilliant. He'd run through dribbles around them, score, 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 win every time. Now the AI, he says, why is it, why is it better? I said, because it's learning. Every time you turn right, it turns left now. It used to turn right, and you get past them and score a goal. I said, this is a system that's learning. He goes, I don't want to play that anymore. <laughs> he said, that's rubbish. He said, I need to win. I said, you need to learn. That's what's important about it. So it is in everywhere. It's in the consumer world, more so than it is in the healthcare. So next one. OK, we talk about data. And I love this as an outside conference. I do and I don't. OK, so Broly and co and sunglasses. OK. What we did, we did a project. You have to partner with people. This is not just about big tech companies. It's about innovation and smart people coming together and creating, creating really clever stuff. This is a, a project we did with a partner around a smart inhaler. So they have the smart inhaler. We own the Weather Channel as a company. You combine the two things, it's amazing what you can do around air quality and tracking of air quality. So it's not about, this is about health in the community. This is about care. This is about predictive. So taking the information from the Weather Channel, combining it with a smart inhaler, Bluetooth, can actually, the physician can see how many times have they used it. That's me done, right? Or oh, is that me again? Okay, that's me done, right. I'll be very quick, I'm nearly done. So it can calculate the risk. And the risk based on how many times they've used it, what is the air quality like, is telling them what's going to happen. Because actually as a, and again, Mark tells me always, don't call them an asthmatic, call them a patient with asthma. So I'm going to do that. If you're a patient with asthma, or a person with asthma, even better, you need information up front. You have to be predictive. This is a problem that's going to happen. It's not going away, it's going to happen. So you have then an app, you have a smart inhaler that's Bluetooth connected to your app, and it tells you the air quality, but it also tells the physician how many times you've used it, and they might change the dosage, they might change what you're having. So again, it's not difficult. You're connecting people. Okay? You connect information. So I love Albert Einstein um, because it's funny because there's an Albert Einstein one that was done recently, and clearly he's not with us anymore, which is about why am I constantly doing quotes. But this one is my favorite because you have to keep moving forward. We are going to continue to talk about this. This is going to be a situation that you're already dealing with right now. So, you know, my, I'll leave you with the fact that it is not about artificial intelligence, it's about the people, okay? It's about information, and it's about using that information the right way to, to make our lives better. So thank you.